my god, you look so fun. <laughs> okay, and so then here's our uh, blocking here. Where is the camera here? Mm -hmm. okay. There's your. Um, that's you. Can you move that closer to me, actually? I'm going to take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We're just getting set up here for the one o'clock. We got two minutes. Yay, I'm excited. <laughs> Are we alive already? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's better to just kind of get it going. <laughs> Behind the scenes right now. Oh, I'm excited. So I'll just put it here and then I just kind of casually flip it back and forth. So right now on the. Uh, Okay, we've got three people looking. We have one more, two more minutes, and um, we'll tell you about this hat. <laughs> if you haven't, if you haven't, if you're just wondering what the hat is, because you know, I, I, Krista looks beautiful in her hat. I feel warm and toasty in my. I think you're rocking it. Like, I think she it's always your beard. That. You think too. so? Yeah. Really? I kind of like this hat. I love the way it feels. Okay, maybe I'll crochet you one or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A black one with like an. Uh, Can I give pee, you like a pink pea in the middle? Okay. <laughs> you know, whatever you come up with is fine. <laughs> I let my creative powers go crazy. This is the, the hard part is getting the stuff in in ten minutes. Do you have your lunch? Do you sitting there with your lunch? I'm having tea. Chris is having water. Yeah. You know, yeah. hangover Probably, cheers. I, I don't want to. I don't want to eat while I'm talking. Hangover? Did you say hangover? I don't know. I was half Kinda? joking. A little it's wine. Right. <laughs> a little wine. I had a good New Year's Eve. A little champagne. Which was, I know, what, two nights ago? So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the... When you hit your 30s, it takes two to three days to recover. You know, this is a special year for me because I am turning 30. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, wait a second. I'm 29 now. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't want to associate with me now, now that I'm not young and vibrant. <laughs> no, I just still see you as 25. Welcome to the 30 Club. I'm so excited. Oh my God, that's so big. Thank you. So there we are. <laughs> I always like to know it's on. You know, we don't have a crew, so we're the cast and the crew. So here we are. Welcome <laughs> to uh, the Sustone first simulcast of the uh, year. 2017. So... We're going to get right in because we don't have a lot of time and we do have some things mapped out that we wanted to talk about. And the first thing really is, and the overarching thing like really is, you know, why do people always assume like they want to become someone new? Um, it says people always talk about being a new person when in fact there's nothing wrong with you. Well, some of you maybe, but <laughs> really it's about what do you, what you think about what you actually do that makes all the difference in what traje trajectory your life is going. So what do you, how would you respond to that, Krista? Well, I think I have maybe a more optimistic view of it where um, I think you can start fresh at any point in your life, but there's something really special to me about January 1st where when everyone else is doing it at the same time, there is a feeling yeah. of like community of like, oh, like we want to make changes. Like, yeah. You know, and that, that Michael Jackson yeah. song, what, the, what, the Man, in, man the in the Mirror. What am I thinking? Of the yeah, the Man in the Mirror. mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the changes are just start with me, like the Man in the Mirror yeah. type of thing. No, but so I, I agree like, with yeah. you. I agree with the ritualization of it is great. But I think that um, we are always in a state of change and transformation, transformation. And we're always new every day. And I think anything that ritualizes um, an act or a change and is a catalyst is a good thing. Um, I want to talk about abandoning resolutions and like what, what, what I think is a problem with resolutions is we're saying them more than we're doing them. Do you agree? <laughs> mm. I, um, I, I heard you say earlier too, like not only are we saying them and not doing them, but you, you, you go as far as to say that don't even talk about it. Do it on your own. Is that sort yes. of your thing? Yeah, thing? it is. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think the problem, um, I think it's great to share and scientifically, like, you know, you're more likely to reach your goals sometimes mm -hmm. um, to talk about your goals. But I think for me, the problem lies not so much like whether you talk about it or not talk mm -hmm. about it. 
Mm-hmm. But whether you shame yourself into it mm-hmm. versus not shaming yourself mm-hmm. and doing it. Because I think yeah. shame is a good motivator for short term, but for long term, it's not healthy for yeah. you. So it's yeah. like, yeah. I think if you could like find a way to do your goal where it's focused on process versus end yeah. result. I love that. I love that you said process because, for mm-hmm. example, someone might be on fat. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm this year I'm going to change my diet and I'm going to work out because they're actually they're actually doing things in response to some negative self talk. It's like negative self talk when you say yeah, instead that. of being yeah. like oh like I'm ashamed of being fat so I'm going to go lose mm-hmm. some weight mm-hmm. and I'm going to like you know yeah. uh, like you know pull myself up by the bootstraps mm-hmm. and all like mm-hmm. all these like you know qualities that we actually revere and and you know here but. Uh, in our country and yet um i think like to go out from the other way without shame of just like i accept myself as i am and i love moving and exercising and feeling mm-hmm. myself mm-hmm. um grow you yeah. know and yeah. uh get better at like the treadmill or get or like be able to run around with my kid just that mm-hmm. focus on mm-hmm. process and yeah. focus on the opposite of shame well is, the thing is know. too is that change is doesn't have to be like there's this end result. It really has to be the change in the way you do things. I said here um, how you will do things, but not necessarily what you will do. Oh, I have okay. One of my favorite <laughs> anecdotes is uh, you introduced it to me. He uh-huh. gave me these, these CDs from um, Pema Chodron. Is that mm-hmm, what you're saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she talks about a teacher told her about these waves, right? And life is like you're standing at the shore, and these waves are hitting you, and you're like, and you know, you like fall over, and you, and you know, you get salt water in your mouth, and you're just like spluttering, and it's it's really painful and awful. And then another wave comes, another wave comes, and the teacher's like, and it's just it's just like that. And then one day, the waves just seem smaller, and um, I love the beauty of that because the waves are might be even the same size, but there's something about the way you're holding yourself at the water's mm-hmm. edge that lets mm-hmm. you like be stronger. Sometimes mm-hmm. you'll get knocked down, but mm-hmm. so it, I think like the focus on changing, not like how to avoid the waves altogether uh, and how to be, how to stop the waves, but rather like <coughs> to change how your attitude toward the waves. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it right there. How can I, I can't really top that one, but um, <laughs> because I think that really makes sense. It definitely makes sense for me. And uh, people have differing viewpoints on whether or not, um, let's use the word suffering, but suffering, stress, uh, hardship, whether or not that is something that we should constantly avoid or if it's something that's inevitable. And if it's something that's inevitable, then how do we learn to live and coexist with that? It's the good and the bad. There's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. But it seems that um, when we have a bad day, we destroy... (laughs) the uh the aspects of good that had happened so what's funny too is like i think a lot of people feel this way like when i when something really good happens to me sometimes i'm like internally flipping out a bit like when's the other shoe gonna drop right Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. like the the, what's the bad that comes to balance this and rather than being like ah no like i'm gonna pretend like just ignore it or whatever just be like oh yeah probably will happen eventually but like you know, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I know I yeah. can withstand that, yeah. you know, building that internal strength. Yeah. yeah. I, I think people will surprise themselves sometimes, at least I know I have, in times of like great strife and great, great crisis, that sometimes in those moments I'm actually at my very best. Yes. Um, and I think many of us worry about how we're going to respond to situations where, you know, crisis and where strife happens. And there's that whole thing, like, there's nothing to fear except fear yeah. itself. Like, worrying about the bad thing happen is the worst. But when you're in the bad thing, yeah. like, yeah. I don't know, there's an ease of decision making, yeah. actually. Because you're I like, I think that we <laughs> fear that we won't be able to handle the situation yeah. in the right and way. You already have in your yeah. lifetime. Yeah. Maybe just yeah. like taking a moment <laughs> at this special time of year, or not special to Kelly, yeah. but special to me and <laughs> others, to just actually, like, <laughs> Maybe before you make your to-do list, to change list, to make a what I've accomplished list, yeah. what I've survived. This is a really good segue because I wanted to mention something that you all may already know about and you may already have, and it's a vision board. And um, a vision board, I think, is very helpful for people who want to manifest certain goals and, and desires and aspirations. 
in a quick visual way that they could see it all in one place, see it every day. And it's actually a very tactile process to make mm -hmm, it too, mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. like cut and paste and hold and absolutely. hang. And yeah. Absolutely. I think if, they, they, if there was a vision board that actually had sound and texture and smell, <laughs> <laughs> like the it's ultimate coming. vision board is like everything um, at once, but definitely like Krista was saying, the process of making it. Um, I want to talk about this too because, you know, again, we do try to do 10 minutes and so we're rushing through things. But it says, you may want the dream job or the dream relationship. If they came along, are you really ready? Ooh. Are you prepared? And then the idea that came to mind that I heard, and I was listening again to, you know, I listen to audiobooks repeatedly, is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. And he mentioned the idea that luck is the result of preparation meeting opportunity. Mm. What do you think about that? <laughs> Um, I'll, I, I just want to say that I think being the feeling of readiness is one of the best feelings in the world. Like, and it's like when you can enjoy feeling ready, you don't even have to like have the thing come. You're just like, I'm ready. Like, it'll right, come. right, right. You have to ready. say that. You have to yeah. say I'm ready. And, and then readiness. And I'll, I'll just make the easy thing. The relationship is a little bit different, but in terms of the, the job opportunity, you know, and I've been struggling with this and I've been, you know, trying to make this transition. And I realized that one of the humps of getting over it is um, is is, built, is writing the resume. Mm, it was a hump. Yeah. I mean, I've written the resume a million times, uh -huh. and I've done it so many times, and I keep doing it the same way. That I uh, had you know a professional look at it and offer some advice, and I took all the advice that I got from multiple sources and what I felt best pre uh, represented myself. And put it all together and so I'm ready my resume is ready and so there's a readiness factor um. but that feeling of readiness though doesn't that I guess like I just want to point out that the feeling of readiness is a beautiful moment in itself that you don't even have to have the thing yet and yet you can enjoy feeling ready and that's something in your control yeah. actually you know? very, I mean that's a good point I mean here we're at one we're at nine minutes in but <laughs> you made a very good point um, the idea of control control does not have to be this thing of like dominance it's a thing of really I think control is a thing of like balance mm -hmm. there's a certain balance like if I put the dishes away I feel like I've controlled the situation of like clutter in the kitchen again it's these minor little things that happen and that we feel that we have some degree of, um, of say about what happens and what we can do mm -hmm. and what's done before we before we close, because we at one minute and ten minutes, I want you to tell again what what's up with the hats. Oh yeah, the mystery. Um, <laughs> so uh, around Thanksgiving with some friends, I I started a worldwide movement of these hats, and they're for the Women's March. Um, so you, um, it's called the Pussy Hat Project. You could check out pussyhatproject.com, um, and you could learn how to make these hats on the site, and you could send them in to marchers to our address in DC. And we can distribute it for you to uh, marchers. And this is a way that you can be a part of the Women's March in a creative way and in a way where you don't have to physically be there. And I've never worn a pussy hat until today. Uh, and I'm wearing one right now. because um, <laughs> These were made... Actually, this is the original pussy hat okay. that was like ever made and designed. Oh. And you're wearing one made by someone in Thailand. Who Isn't that amazing? It. Yeah. That's amazing. Something like that. And, you know, the... the um, uh, personally being involved somewhat with Krista and I learned all about the whole knitting subculture <laughs> and the whole knitting you know the social aspect of knitting but also the ability to be able to have um, almost a meditative focus on something but even be around people yeah you're around yeah. people yet yeah you're meditating yeah. yet you're also creating yeah. something tangible right. it's it's really it's like whether you were doing a group meditation or you're doing a yoga class we're all doing individual things, but we're all together in this collective, and there's an energy that comes from that. And from this, they have a product, and you can find out more um, at please the website. Do. <laughs> please yeah. do. But anyways, uh, have a great year. My final, my final thoughts are weather the storms as they hit, and enjoy the sun on your face as much as the cloudy skies. Oh, I can't top that. <laughs> Let's end there. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Oh, let me turn her off.